we could refer to it. Now let's begin optimizing this just a bit. Now, when the button is clicked, notice that every single time that button was clicked, we jump into that pool once again, and we grab the link element. Now, this isn't going to be a huge deal at all in our situation, but it's important for you to be thinking about these things. Why, every time the user clicks on a button, do you want to jump into the DOM? Why, when the user clicks on a button, do we want to jump into the DOM every single time? Remember what we talked about before, jump into the pool a minimal number of times. So why don't we, at the top, create a variable called link and make that to the link elements wrapped in the jQuery object. And that way, I'll remove this console.log, I can simply refer to that variable. And now when the button is clicked, we're not jumping to the DOM every time, we're referencing this variable that is storing that reference. Let's try it again, refresh. And now it's working just as it was before, but we're using best practices. Now, if you wanna take this even further, if you think about it, every time this button is clicked, regardless of whether the current style sheet is equal to the value that is associated with the button, we're still executing this code. So if you wanted, you could also detect, hey, is the current style sheet equal to what the user is clicking on? If so, I don't wanna do anything at all. Another option would be to disable the button that is currently selected. And that's what we're gonna do in this case. So when a button is clicked, we are going to update the link attribute. And then at the bottom, we're going to say, get this. But remember, once again, I'm now using two jQuery objects. So I'm going to stash this or cache it. And a very common thing you'll see is to use the word this, the keyword this, and prefix it with the dollar sign. Now, some people don't like this, but I think it works fine. And this is an easy way to let us know, hey, we actually have access to those jQuery methods in this variable. Now I will replace it, this. And right here, we're going to say this.attribute disabled, and merely the presence of it will cause it to be disabled, but we can double up or set it to true. So one more time, when I click on night, you'll see that we received the night style sheet, and now I can no longer click on that button. But now, as you might expect, when I click on day, the same thing happens, but we're not toggling these. So now I can't click on any button at all. So maybe when you click on a button, right here below, we can say get this, and now I wanna reference all of its siblings. And this is a new method you're going to learn. Now, siblings refers to other elements on the same level. So for example, if I had these stored within a div and I said button.siblings, it would refer to all other buttons on this level. However, it would not refer to any buttons that were on a different level or were part of an ancestor or descendant. So that's an easy way. If you have the ability and you know the DOM well enough, if you want to say get all of the other buttons that are on this level, the siblings method will work well. And now, rather than setting an attribute or returning the value of an attribute, we want to remove it entirely. So now we use remove adder, and we're going to remove the disabled attribute. Reload the page, I click on night. You can see that it is no longer selectable, but if I click on day, we're now toggling those. And now we don't have to worry about the user clicking on the day button more than once. Now again, there's lots of different ways to do this. You could also detect whether the value of the link attribute is equal to this custom files value. You could do that as well. And as long as they are not the same, then you make the update. Lots of different ways to do this. Now the final thing is right here, I'm going to update this value. And it's a best practice, don't use multiple var statements. You can use a comma separated list. So this is fairly common. You declare var once for the first variable, and then for every new one, you use a comma and you indent it like so, and it makes it a little bit cleaner. And the final step to clean up our code is I'll copy this, and I'm gonna make this occur first, and then we can group these together. So we can say, get the button that was clicked, and then I want you to get its siblings, and I want you to remove any disabled attribute that may be applied to them. And then we can chain these. So there's nothing wrong with using this twice because we're not jumping into the DOM or the pool. We've already saved it. But if you wanna chain it and it's not too long, we can group these together. But now it's important to remember that at this point, if I were to try to do this, that would not work. And the reason is, think about it. We're saying, get the button that was clicked, and now we're going to change our selection to all other buttons. And then we're going to remove the attribute. And then we're going to apply an attribute. But we're applying an attribute to the siblings. We're no longer referencing the button that was clicked. So in this case, we can use a helpful end method. 
I'll indent these to show that these are associated with the siblings. And then if I type dot end, it's a way of saying, okay, we're done with that. Go back to where you were before. So now we're done with the siblings. Go back to the jQuery object. And you could even do multiples of these. You just wanna be a little careful if it gets too convoluted. There's nothing wrong with separating them out. And now that we have our end method, we can take this out and put it below. This dot siblings button, remove the attribute. We're done with the siblings. So go back to the button that was clicked. And now we're going to disable the button itself. One more time, click on night, that's working, day. And now I can no longer click on those, that works great. Now the final step is, I'll close the semicolon out, is the click method is a helper. Now these are convenience methods that jQuery makes available. There's also things like change, which wouldn't necessarily be applicable here, but you can imagine when the user changes text in an input or they make a selection in a dropdown. There's also helpers like hover. Now these will all translate to the on method. In translation, button.click is the same thing. It's going to point to button.onClick function. It's the exact same thing. You'll find that I generally use this more direct route. And the reason is button.click is simply another function that points to button.onClick or the on method. So why make it do more work calling additional methods when this is perfectly readable as well? Get the buttons, when one of them is clicked, then do this. And the same thing, when one of them is hovered or mouse enter, and you can refer to api.jquery.com for a full list, but don't worry, we're gonna be covering a lot of them in this lesson. So the final step is to make sure that it's still working. There it is, but now we're using the on method. But congratulations, this is your first little program. You could actually use this in your projects, and we're using jQuery along with events.